What up everybody? Instruct the Beats back again here with another fractions lesson. Today we're going to be talking about how multiples of unit fractions make up our fractions that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, before we get to our objective today, let's review some basic principles we already know. Multiplication is just repeated, sorry about the handwriting, addition. So when we see the multiplication sign, really we can read that as groups of. So we have four groups of six, right? So we could say six plus six plus six plus six. That's what this multiplication equation written as repeated addition would be, right? Multiplication is repeated addition. If you know that today, that's gonna be very, very helpful to you. All right, and then we also have talked about decomposing on some of our lessons before. So going back to whole numbers, we could decompose uh, 5 into 4 plus 1, right? Or we could do 1 plus 1 plus 3. There's a multitude of ways to decompose numbers. Today, though, we want to decompose this fraction only using unit fractions. So again, we've talked about that. But here's a reminder. A unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is a 1. So that would be 1 fifth. So how many one-fifths would I need to make up four-fifths? So if I'm decomposing this, if I'm breaking it down, I'd have one-fifth plus one-fifth, that's two-fifths, I like to draw arrows, plus another one-fifth, that'd be three-fifths, plus I need another one-fifth, that would be four-fifths. So if I took four-fifths and broke it apart, oh, and I forgot my plus sign right here, into unit fractions, that would look like one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. And of course, when you add those back together, you're going to get four fifths. So decomposing just means we're breaking apart into smaller pieces. So in today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking both of those skills, understanding that multiplication is repeated addition and how to decompose fractions. And we're going to combine them into an awesome peanut butter jelly sandwich of math. So today I will be able to understand that a fraction is a multiple of a unit fraction. Hopefully I worded that one correctly. Let's go back to uh, four-fifths and let's take a look at this conceptually, right? You've, I've already decomposed it into its unit fraction, right? Its unit fraction is one-fifth and I had to have one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. Well, now let's combine that with what we reviewed in our first slide, which is multiplication is repeated addition. How many groups right here of one-fifth do I have? Well, I see that I have one, two, three, four groups. So if I wanted to write this as a multiplication equation, I would write four groups of one-fifth, and when you have four groups of one-fifth, your answer obviously would be four-fifths. So today what we're realizing is four-fifths is a multiple of its unit fraction, right? Which means I can multiply the unit fraction by something to get four-fifths. So I needed four groups of one-fifth to get four-fifths. Let's take a look at modeling this behind this ugly yellow box. Okay, so if I wanted to model this, here I have an array model. Okay, and this is going to be equal to one whole. And underneath I have a number line, and I've split it into five equal groups. So the first thing, first of all, I always want to just make sure I label my number line. And my, Oh, that's a bad five. And my denominator is five, which means in between zero holes and one hole, there should be five spaces, which there is. So this would be one hole or five-fifths. Now, here's my area model. And if you look at this, I would need one, two, three, four groups of one-fifth to shade in a total of four fifths, right? And right here in my number line, I can do the same thing. If I do one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth, I end up at four fifths. So I'm showing it with repeated addition right here, but you can also show it with a model or with a number line. You would need four groups, one, two, three, four groups of one fifth to give you four fifths. And on a number line, you would need one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth, four groups of one-fifth to give you four-fifths. Let's take a look at another example. All right, here's an I do problem. Check this one out. I have three eights and I want to decompose that into its unit fraction. Again, my denominator would have to be eight and it's a unit fraction if it's one part of eight. So the shortcut is it's a unit fraction if the numerator is one. So if I decompose this, I would need one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth. So if I wrote that as a multiplication sentence, that would be three groups of one eighth. Now, some of you are thinking, well, wait a minute, I can use a commutative property to do one eighth times three. And that's correct, but that means something entirely different. Check out our fractions of a set lesson to find out what that means. 
So today, we need to write it in the correct order. Multiplication sign, you can read that as groups of. So three groups of one eighth. And again, what would their answer be? Three eighths. So if I add up one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, or if I multiply three times one eighth, I'm still going to get three eighths. We don't have the uh, ugly yellow box, but we do have a white box down here because I want to model this on a number line. So again, I've already labeled this one. Here I have zero and one, my denominator is eight. If I start at zero, I would need three groups of one eighth, right? One, two, three groups of one eighth to make three eighths. So using math terminology, we could say three eighths is a multiple of one eighth, which means I can multiply something by one eighth to get three eighths. All right, let's do eight halves now. Let's decompose this. And this is an improper fraction. Doesn't matter, we can still decompose it. If my denominator is two, that means my unit fraction would have to be one out of two, right? A unit fraction is one part of the fraction. So how many groups of one half would I need? Hopefully some of you are already thinking, wait a minute, I know that I have eight groups of one half because my denominator was eight and you're starting to see that shortcut. That's okay if you're not, you could also just go ahead and draw this out. One half plus one half would be two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves, and I'm running out of room, eight halves. You would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of one half. And again, to model this, instead of doing a number line, I just did an area model or a tape diagram, you would need to shade in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight groups of one half. So eight times one half would get you eight halves. Hopefully some of you are starting to see the pattern now. You can see the whole number in the numerator if it's one, and you're starting to kind of pick up on this pattern. Also, by the way, this could be divided or turned into a whole number of four. All right, here uh, we have a area model, and it says write an addition equation to represent the shaded part. So use only unit fractions in your equation. And then step number two says write the multiplication equation that also represents the shaded parts. So now I'm giving you the model. And so the first thing you should do is you should come over here and we should write down what fraction this is. So it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 equal groups, or sorry, 12 equal parts that make up my whole. You can think about it like a pizza if you want. It's typically how I think about uh, area models that are circles. And it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces shaded. So using unit fractions, what would your addition equation look like? And then what would your multiplication equation look like? So go ahead and pause the video, try this one out, and then push play to check your understanding. Hopefully you just paused it. I'm actually gonna start my multiplication equation because hopefully you guys are starting to kind of pick up on the pattern that you're seeing. I know that my unit fraction would be 1 12th, right? So how many groups of 1 12th would I need? And I know if my numerator for this is going to be seven, I'm going to need seven groups because if I repeatedly add up 1 12th, I would have to do it seven times to get seven twelfths. So I'm gonna need seven groups of 1 12th, which would equal seven twelfths. So hopefully you're kind of starting to pick up on this pattern right here and, and how all these numbers relate to each other. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. You could, go, you could have gone ahead and written the addition equation, which would be 1 12th plus 1 12th. I should have picked a different denominator here. Plus 1 12th plus 1 12th. That's going to be 4 12th plus another one would be 5 12th plus another one would be 6 12th. And I'm going to add one to the front because I'm going to run out of room to make 7 12th. So your addition equation would be 1 12th plus 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 1 12th or 7 groups of 1 12th. All right, I have one last you try problem. This is multiple choice just because you're getting ready for a test or you're helping someone who's getting ready for a test and you're watching this to learn how we would do this type of math. Which of the following equations represents four times 1 12th, okay? So go ahead and think about what four times 1 12th really means. What does this multiplication sign mean? We've been talking about the entire lesson. And then choose the one that you think you would match up with this equation and then push play to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it. The first thing that I would do is, is I would jot down that I know this is saying four groups of one twelfth, right? Or that also is going to give me an answer of four twelfths, right? Because I know if I add up one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth plus one twelfth, that's going to be four twelfths. I picked up on that pattern. So as I'm going to use both of these sets of information, 
to go through and answer this. Well, first of all, the first I'm going to cross out is 4 plus 12. Because that's whole numbers, and I'm looking for 4 twelfths, which is less than 1. I also know that this is not repeated multiplication. So some of us might have picked A because we saw 1 twelfth four times. But if you look right here, we're multiplying. And we know multiplication is really repeated addition. So we wanted 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth not times, okay? We're not doing repeated multiplication, we're doing repeated addition. And when you look at that, your answer right here has to be C. Now, you could have also got confused because you saw four groups and you saw the addition sign, but remember, we are doing unit fractions. And then the other thing you could have done is, if you were confused, you could have added both of these up, you would have got four twelfths for this one, this one you would have got 16 twelfths, and you know that your answer is supposed to be four twelfths. So there's a variety of different ways you could solve this question, Hopefully you can do it using your conceptual understanding, but you can always solve the answer choices if you need to and check your answer that you got. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We know there's lots of different on options online. We hope that this is helpful to you, um, whether or not you are just trying to learn this for the first time or you're trying to help somebody else learn this for the first time. We really appreciate you checking out Instructed Beats. Check out all our other songs, lessons, videos, timers, relaxing music. We would love for you to have you subscribe. Hit that like button, leave a comment. Again, thank you so much. Instructive Beats, out.